Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. Not as long as it usually takes me to get back here, but it's been like a month. Life has just been lifing, okay? As you guys know, I'm a mom of two toddlers, okay? A two and a three year old. So my life is just crazy. If you have never seen me before, my name is Brittany Gray. I'm a licensed cosmetologist and obviously a mom. I have been wanting to do this video about cradle cap for like a month now and I finally got the time to sit down and make it. I'm in the most random area ever. I'm like in a corner of my laundry room. I'm overdressed for being in my laundry room. But tomorrow is Valentine's Day and so I was like, let me get a little bit festive, you know? So anyway, so today we're going to be talking about cradle cap, but please stay tuned because at the end of this video, I do want to ask you guys a question that is like totally unrelated, but just ask you guys something just like as like my friends in my head. Anyway, so yes. So let's get into the video now. If you haven't already, please take a moment to subscribe if you want to know more about hair. We're doing free hair education here okay for those of you who don't know what cradle cap is but it's when your baby or when a baby gets like this like scaly matter <laughs> on their scalp it almost looks like psoriasis to me both of my kids had cradle cap and my second daughter had like terrible recurring cradle cap which is what actually inspired me to make this video because when I was like going on my deep dive to figure out how to get rid of her cr cradle cap, there weren't a lot of answers because we don't really know or doctors don't really know why babies get cradle cap or what exactly it is or what the purpose of it is. Um, and so there's not a lot of information on it. I mean, there is a lot of information, but not a lot of science, like a, lo a lot of scientific research done on this because it is harmless for the most part. Cradle cap is actually or believed to be an excess of the production of oil on a baby's scalp and then you know it meshes with their skin cells that we all shed daily and it just creates like this crust <laughs> for my first daughter i was able to knock it out like in one fell swoop with my second daughter i had to do a deep dive and do my own research and figure it out for myself even after consulting with her pediatrician who i love by the way okay dr andrade but I'm just saying, like, I figured it out myself. For most babies who have cradle cap, there is an easy way to get rid of it and something that I did with my first daughter. So this is what I did. Or I parted her hair and put, like, hella Vaseline. We're using professional language here, okay? Hella Vaseline, like, slathered her scalp in Vaseline. And my daughter, my first daughter had a ton of hair. So you want to make sure that if your baby does have a lot of hair, you want to make sure you're actually parting it, parting their hair, and then putting the Vaseline on the actual scalp, not just like slather, slathering it on their hair because you want to make sure that it's touching their skin. So anyway, so you get Vaseline or Aquaphor. I, I love this Aquaphor ointment. I swear by it. Hashtag not sponsored, but they should cut me a check. So anyway, you can use regular Vaseline or Aquaphor. Just put hella Aquaphor on their scalp. I used a color brush and like put it on her scalp. Took another thin piece, like, you know, section off another thin piece, put it on her scalp, put it on her scalp, all over her scalp, right? And then you put a beanie on their head and leave it on overnight, okay? Let that um, Vaseline, like, marinate into the flakes. And then the next day, you're going to want to get a comb, gentle, a gentle comb. Don't, like, scrape your baby's head, obviously, but, like, get, like, a comb where the teeth are more dull but just like a regular comb, but just make sure that the teeth aren't like super sharp, you know, because you know how some uh, teeth on certain combs are sharp. You want to get a comb that's not as sharp, but you know, just a regular comb, not a wide tooth comb, but just like a regular comb, whether it's like a hair cutting comb, a hair styling comb, whatever, a comb, get a comb. And then you're going to gently, gently like scrape off, like go through each section and scrape off the dandruff and like flakes were coming off of her head and I would like wipe it off on a napkin or something and then do the next, you know, part the hair, scrape, part the hair, scrape, part the hair, scrape. Or they also have like these silicone baby scalp brushes 
that are meant for cradle cap that you could use with a shampoo, that would be actually a great idea. If you don't trust yourself, like I kind of, I kind of know what I'm doing, obviously, but if you aren't really like adept at like hair and using combs and brushes and things like that, then yes, get a silicone brush and like gently buff it off of your baby's head. And if you're confused about what to get exactly, I will leave links down below. Then you want to put them in the bath, just like you would bathe them or wash their hair any other time you'd wash their hair, um, which obviously if they're an infant, um, you want to lay them in a little baby bath and then make sure you don't get water in their eyes and then wash their hair with their regular baby shampoo and then style as usual, condition style as usual. And then if they have an easy case of cradle cap, then it should be done. So my second daughter had major cradle cap okay it was so bad that like her scalp was like encrusted and it was on her forehead and her eyebrows my poor baby honestly it is hard for me to look back at pictures of like the first few months of her life because she had her dairy protein allergy and broke out all in a major rash on her face that was not baby acne that I thought was baby acne at, at the time but it turned out that she was allergic to dairy so that along with the cradle cap like for a long time i was like damn like my baby's looking a little bit crazy i mean not that i was judging her at all but like she had such severe like she had like the acne and then she had the cradle cap and then her hair wasn't growing and because of the cradle cap which i feel like just based upon my research okay and my professional opinion this major case of cradle cap prevented her from gr growing hair for a long time because after i got rid of it her hair started growing a lot more and before when she, when she was in the midst of her cradle cap she was also losing a lot of hair and that's another thing that i wanted to say this is t totally an aside is that i want you guys to realize like okay obviously i'm not a freaking scientist i'm not a dermatologist i'm not a doctor whatever i haven't like you know looked under a microscope at cradle cap but maybe you guys can relate to this but i feel like sometimes there are things especially when it comes to hair and especially when it comes to black hair or ethnic hair any hair that's basically like not caucasian respectfully like i'm half caucasian myself but i feel like there isn't there hasn't been extensive research on black hair in particular like there just hasn't that's like a total deeper conversation um that there just hasn't been a lot of medical research just in general specifically on like black hair and black skin but again that is like a total different conversation but if you know you know and there are a lot of things that we have to figure out for ourselves and so with that said when she was going through this i took her to my pediatrician and she was just like oh put some coconut oil on it and um it'll go away and i did the i did the vaseline stuff i did the coconut oil like i did all the normal things that I did with my first daughter and like her cradle cap, not only did it not go away, it seemed to grow back. Like it literally felt like it was growing back and that it got worse and that it was like irritated. And so I was like, what the heck is going on here? She was like losing hair and stuff. This to me, in my professional hairstylist opinion, this to me seems like it's fungal. Well, even the pattern that it grew in, like when it would come down to her forehead, it almost looked like it had like a border on it almost like how like the way that ringworm looks i was like you know what i think i need to put something on her hair that's gonna kill a fungus instead of buying like a new product i happen to have something in my um medicine cabinet that i've had like for a very long time and i decided to put that on her hair which this is again not sponsored but this product has tea tree oil in it let me show you so this one is the puria wonder balm and I bought this a while ago because I suffer from eczema every so often. This balm, it has a consistency. I'm like almost done with this. It has tea tree oil in it, eucalyptus oil, lavender oil, and more. Combat skin infections caused by fungus, bacteria, and yeast. Okay, so who knows? Maybe it was, maybe, well, I guess, is yeast a fungus? I don't know. Maybe it was, I don't know if it was a bacteria or a yeast, but either way, I knew that this is going to kill it. And you can make something like this on your own, I'm guessing. So you have to dilute tea tree oil. Please do not put tea tree oil directly on your baby's head. Like, that will burn. Do not do that. Actually, just buy this. Don't even, <laughs> I was going to say, like, maybe if you mix tea tree oil with, like, some Vaseline, but just don't even do that. Don't play chemist at home. You don't want to play chemist when it comes to your baby's head. So I use this, and I use it in the exact same way 
that I did with my first daughter's cradle cap. So I got a bunch of it and I used a, a color brush and I parted her hair, put it directly on her scalp, slathered it, slathered it, slathered it, made sure it was on her scalp. I massaged it in, gave her a little cute little scalp massage. I put a beanie on her, left it on overnight, and I even put it like on her forehead because like I said, she had cradle cap like on her forehead. Like her newborn pictures, I had to have photoshopped because her forehead, it was to the point, you guys, she had such discoloration on her forehead that like I couldn't tell like, is this a birthmark or is this from cradle cap? And it ended up being from the cradle cap. So anyway, I did the same thing. Put it on her scalp, slathered it on, massage it in, put a beanie on her head, left it on overnight. And then the next day I did the same thing. I used my gentle comb and I gently scraped off all the flakes and I shampooed her hair as usual. I don't remember exactly, but I think I may have used a dandruff shampoo on her that starts with an N. Does it start with an N? I have it in my shower right now. It's like the best dandruff shampoo. And I also use this shampoo on my face when I'm getting like a fungal ac acne. I use it as a face wash. I leave it on for a couple seconds and rinse it off. So I'll leave that link down below too. I can't think of the name of it right now, but I may have used that, shampooed her hair, conditioned it, and then styled it as usual, and it was gone. And then slowly her scalp healed, her skin healed, and like her, her true skin color and skin texture started to come back. Her hair started growing. It was just amazing. And so, yes, that's why I wanted to share this whole thing with you guys today. I know that there are so many parents out there who struggle with trying to figure out their baby's cradle cap and we don't really have a lot of answers. But if you happen to have a baby who had like who has like a severe case like mine and you can't figure out why it just keeps coming back and coming back, then maybe give this method a try. So that is the end of that video, you guys. If you did make it this far in the video, I did want to ask you guys something totally unrelated. Is that I'm trying to figure out what to do with my hair. When it comes to other people and their hair, I'm like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what to do. Cut it this way, do this color, this would look amazing on you, whatever. And I do know generally like what looks good on me and what doesn't, but I just don't know my next step with my hair. So I wanted to get your opinion because Lately, I've been wanting to go back to brown. And um, I don't know if that's like a good idea or not. I just feel like, you know what? I've been doing highlights for the past year and I haven't done highlights in so many months. I need the works. I need a keratin treatment. I need hair color. I need keratin treatment. I need highlights if I'm gonna go lighter or continue to do highlights or else I need to do my hair darker. I need hair color, but I haven't been coloring my hair and my roots keep growing out because I just don't know what to do. So that's where I'm at, you guys. Do I do more highlights? But then my highlights need to go lighter. I don't know. Or like before I go back to dark, should I like, <sighs> Play with a copper because I always wanted to do that. I think it'll be cute on me. But then I don't know about the commitment. I feel like with copper, I'm gonna have to have my hair done. Like I just like I I can't I can't just like do a messy bun all the time because then I personally tend to look like a Chucky doll sometimes with red hair. And so it's like I need to have a look if I'm gonna have copper hair. Like I have to have my hair done. I have to have a look, and that's just not realistic for me every day. Like I don't know what am I gonna do, you guys. And then I want to go back dark, but then I'm I'm always like, oh, let's go dark with the freaking center part and medium length. I'm also sick of styling my hair and stuff, so I was thinking about cutting my hair into a bob. But since I just cut bangs recently, I don't want bangs and a bob. Like I need something around my face because then I'm probably gonna look like a freaking pumpkin head. I don't know. I'm having like an identity hair, a hair, a hair identity crisis. I don't know what I'm doing in any aspect of my life. But anyway, so that's what that was all about. <laughs> what do I do with my hair? Please help me out here. Anyway, I try to do like a messy bun today to be like, you know, as a, as a Pamela Anderson vibe. But then as I was doing it, I realized I don't have enough hair. So, all right, we're going to spin it out. 
we're just gonna make you do what you do sorry to keep harping on this like i didn't want to make this whole video all about my hair but seriously i already said the important part of the video the main part um but also as you guys may have noticed or maybe you haven't you guys don't follow me like that like see how pale i am this is like my true skin color i have spent so many years tanning whether i tan whether i go lay out on the beach or whether i go sit in a tanning bed like a couple times and my tan will last me like all like for months and months but i haven't been doing that because i've been trying to be more conscious conscious of aging and trying to avoid getting skin cancer <laughs> and so i feel like when my hair is light or like this color i feel like it doesn't i feel like darker looks better on me when i'm this color because then i have some contrast instead of just looking like one big yellow bitch Does that make sense yes that is it for this video if you guys have any more hair video requests or any other video requests at all then leave it in a comment down below i'm so glad by the way to just be back here connecting with you guys as often as I can. I feel like a connection and it makes me so happy that like when people remember me and stuff from being on YouTube. Yes, if I'm not here, I'm on Instagram. I have a hair group on Facebook. I'm also on TikTok. I will leave the links to everything down below. And also I will leave links to the products that I mentioned today down below as well. So thank you guys so much for watching and you guys will see me in my next video. Bye. And happy Valentine's Day.